This is a tricky thing. Really wake up now and pay attention. Everybody. That's a key thing here. In order to work with, with reactor grade uranium, only 3%, you have to have the moderator. Otherwise, the uranium-238 eats up all the neutrons. If you have a moderator, you have slow neutrons. That means the chain reaction is slow. It comes out, it wanders around, and then it finally finds another uranium. Boom! Out comes two of them. One of them goes to plutonium, the other is wandering around. Finally, it's a slow thing because of the moderator. Because it's slow, suppose you start to overheat. This happened in Chernobyl. In Chernobyl, they had a graphite reactor, a very badly designed graphite reactor. It started to overheat. It had a positive temperature coefficient. Nothing like that would ever be made legal in any country that had any kind of oversight. Positive temperature coefficient means that when it gets hotter, it starts reacting faster. That's absolutely illegal in the United States and every other rational country, but it wasn't in, in the Soviet Union. So the reaction started going faster and faster. It still had the moderator, because without the moderator, it wouldn't work. But it got going so fast that it got up to the energy density of TNT. Now, at that point, in the atomic bomb, the reaction is going so fast, because it has fast neutrons, that, that before the thing can blow itself apart, the reaction doubles, 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 and you've released all the energy of all the atoms before the thing can flow, throw itself apart. In Chernobyl, once it got up to the density of TNT, the thing exploded, and we never got a nuclear explosion. You can't get a nuclear explosion. You can't get the factor of a million if you have slow neutrons. But you need slow neutrons or the reactor won't work at all. So what happens in these things is the Chernobyl nuclear react reactor blew up like as if it were loaded with TNT. There was an explosion, but not a nuclear explosion, not an atomic bomb type explosion, just a pure dynamite explosion. Well, what's so bad about that? Well, 36,000 people dead is what's the result of that. Why is that? Because it's not the explosion that killed people. What happened is the explosion set the graphite on fire. And the graphite started to burn. Now, what's the problem with that? What's the big deal about a fire? The problem is all these fission fragments that are in these pellets, they're highly radioactive. Those are the things you want to take out, and you'd like to remove the plutonium from them. You'd like to bury them underground somewhere. But instead, they go up in the smoke. So this highly radioactive stuff is going up in the smoke. And that's what then spread over the city of Chernobyl and all the way up to Sweden. And when you calculate it, as I said, you'll never see these deaths because they're a tiny fraction of the other cancer deaths. But uh, when you, but, but, but we calculate 36,000 real people, each one of whom is probably a nice person. And they're dead because of this. They would have lived longer. So it's a real tragedy, 36,000 real, real deaths. And it came about because of a reactor accident that ran away. It would never blow up like a nuclear bomb because it uses moderated neutrons. If, if the neutrons aren't moderated, then the chain reaction stops because then they're absorbed on the uranium-238. You can't have both. To make it work with slightly enriched uranium, reactor-grade uranium, you have to use slow neutrons. If you use slow neutrons, the thing can't explode. Well, it can explode a little bit enough to set the thing on fire and spread this radioactivity. That's what happened. What do people worry about for the American reactor? You're not going to have a carbon fire. Probably, you're not going to have a reactivity accident. Reactivity is when it starts getting hotter and it gets worse because it has a negative reactivity. If this thing overheats, it tends to slow down the nuclear reaction. So what do people worry about? They came up with a, what they call the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. And the worst that anybody can, uh, can come up with is a nuclear meltdown. And let me show you how the meltdown works. This is the idea. Somehow, a pipe breaks, and you develop a leak in the reactor. And this water all flows out. What's the first thing that happens when the water flows out? The chain reaction stops. Why does the chain reaction stop? Because there's no moderator. Without a moderator, the chain reaction. So the first thing that'll happen in this worst case scenario is the chain reaction stopped. By the way, in the Chernobyl, you know, once this thing had the explosion, the chain reaction stopped. 1985, was it? 86? Uh, the Soviet Union was in the beginning of the era of glasnost. I had 
been there shortly before that and had made four trips to the Soviet Union. The Glasnost thing was very exciting. They were doing their best to be open like the U.S. was. And uh, they announced that they had this accident uh, and, and the chain reaction had stopped. And the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee at that point said, another blatant lie from the Soviet Union. Anybody who knows anything knows the chain reaction hasn't stopped. And I go, I start crying. <laughs> it's part of the inspiration for this course. If any of you was ever head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, you will know the chain, they weren't lying. Here he is publicly accusing them in front of the world of lying. And everybody who knew anything technical knew that he was wrong. Of course the chain, what, so why did he say that? Well, he was probably confusing the chain reaction with the radioactivity of the fission fragments. Of course there's a lot of radioactivity in there. Everybody knows that doesn't stop, and that's the danger. But the chain reaction had stopped, which is all that they had said. So the radioactivity continues on. Now once the water's all drained, these things are full of radioactive particles. So what happens with them? Well, they're hot, because they're radioactive. The water was cooling them. In fact, that radioactivity contributes to the heating of the water. This water is made hot, and that's what goes and runs the turbines, the hot water. The, the chain reaction is used to heat water. And the water runs a turbine. That's how a nuclear reactor works. So what happens when the water is all gone? You're left with the fuel. The fuel gets hot. It might melt. So they put in a very carefully designed emergency core cooling system. This is called the core, core cooling system. And that cools it off, so there's no problem. Well, if there's no problem, then this is not the worst case scenario. So therefore, let's assume the emergency, emergency core cooling system fails. After all, we're trying to get the worst case. What's the probability it will fail? Well, you can calculate that. It's infinitesimal. But you know, people make mistakes in these calculations. They don't realize things. So let's do the worst case scenario. By the way, I believe in the nuclear industry, that's the only industry in which we require a worst case scenario. You have to assume that everything fails and then ask what happens. We don't do this in the chemical industry. Worst case scenario in a chemical industry. You know, a truck full of chlorine driving right through a populated area of New York City and crashes and the fumes come out. Every now and then you see a train crash and they evacuate the nearby cities because the trains carried chlorine or something like that. But nobody analyzes worst case scenarios, but in the nuclear industry they do. But let's go on with the worst case scenario. So therefore, the water's gone, the emergency core cooling system fails, this stuff just heats up. What happens when it heats up? Well, it, it will melt. So nothing's working, the stuff will melt, it'll dribble down and form a little puddle on the bottom. Now this stuff has rather thick steel, I forget exactly how thick it is, I think maybe a a foot or two of, of steel. And it's inspected all the time to make sure there are no cracks and things. But worst case scenario, let's say this pool happens to accumulate in a nice small area and it melts its way through and, and dribbles out the bottom. What happens then? Well, this whole thing is surrounded by a concrete containment building made of reinforced concrete. I forget again exactly how thick that is. I used to know these numbers. Uh, but it's probably, you know, eight feet thick or something like that. Uh, Chernobyl had no containment building. None. This has the steel, and then it has the concrete. So it gets to the bottom, it should spread out and cool off, but what if it doesn't spread out? What if it somehow manages, worst case scenario, to come down and work its way through the containment building? Liquid stuff. If you ever saw the, it was the first alien movie? where they sniff off this alien that's on the guy's face, and out comes this acid that starts melting its way through the spaceship all the way down. So maybe this stuff will do the same thing, worst case scenario, and continue on down. Then what happens? It gets into the ground. OK, big deal. Nah, the gases can still escape. And there are some gases that can escape and lead to bad levels of radioactivity if that happens. So this is what people analyze. This is called the nuclear meltdown. The movie The China Syndrome was about this. The, the scenes where they say, meltdown, what does that mean? It means we're all dead. 
the connection to that logic I never understood. But this gas can escape and, and spread over the countryside, and it's a bad amount of radioactivity. Is it as much as Chernobyl? Oh, no, nowhere near as much as Chernobyl. Why not? Well, first of all, it's only the gases that get out. The rest gets into the ground. Oh, that might get into the groundwater. Yeah, but the difference between getting into the groundwater and, and having come as smoke and cover the city. So this worst case scenario is not nearly as bad as Chernobyl. Chernobyl was, was worse than we can imagine possibly happening with a decent design. 